It's Platt, and today we go to Thailand. That's next on Platt's Beer of the Week. All right, so particular beer we have today is Singha Premium Import Lager. Uh, this beer was suggested by the viewer Jose Lopez. Jose, thank you very much for the suggestion. If any of you others of you have made suggestions, I have them down. It just seems like with this whole pandemic thing or whatever, uh, a lot of the liquor stores are cutting back on their selection. Uh, every time I walk into one, it seems like, you know, they've kind of pared down their selection. And I know there's distribution issues, this, that, and the other from certain spots of the world. I totally get it, but I will look for those beers is what, is what I'm uh, trying to say. Uh, this particular beer, Singha, uh, is produced by Boon Rod Brewery based in Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, a little background in Boon Rod. Boon Rod employs uh, roughly 3,500 employees over nine different facilities throughout uh, Thailand. Uh, Singha, or more particularly the uh, lion that is the company's logo, uh, logo uh, Singha is a Asian lion that is prominent in both Hindu and Thai cultures. The reference a lot, and it's a symbol of power. So it uh, uh, make a great symbol for your beer company, which is what they did. Um, Boonrod Brewing was founded in 1933, uh, and I'm going to apologize right now. I want to butcher the gentleman's name. Uh, I was founded by a gentleman named Boonrod. That was his first name, Shrethaputra. <laughs> no, I did not get that right, but that's about as good as I'm going to get. Uh, for the rest of the time, we'll just refer to him as Boonrod. Uh, Boon Rod originally ran a ferry service across uh, one of the rivers there, I believe, in the Bangkok area. Uh, and was successful for a little while, but uh, eventually the government put a road, a bridge across the river, which kind of uh, ruined the ferry business for him. However, it was about this time, particularly in 1921, that Boon Rod had kind of an epiphany. There were no breweries in Thailand at the time, and there were some imports of beers coming in, some of the classic European uh, style lagers and Boon Rad had kind of a vision of you know hey we can do this here there's no need to import beers or whatever and so he set about the process of getting the first brewing license in Thailand uh, sorry there's a little construction going on outside uh, one of the issues of living in, in a big city but anyway uh, to get back so Boon Rad started the process of getting that license and in 1930 he finally did get the first brewing license in Thailand. Uh, then the next step was to learn to brew. Uh, Boonrod actually kind of did the process in reverse. A lot of times, a lot of these stories I'll tell you about these breweries is someone that was a home brewer that gained a sense of passion or had gone to a, you know, a college brewing program or had worked at another brewery. Boonrod uh, decided to start the brewery before he even knew how to brew beer. So Boonrod ended up taking a trip uh, to Germany and Denmark and learning to brew. After he got his education in Europe and brewing, and uh, you know, particularly was influenced on the styles of beer to produce, he uh, came back to Thailand and started building the brewery. And in 1933, the brewery was finally completed, and in 1934, beer started rolling off uh, the assembly line. Um, something today that I don't think a lot of people will appreciate, but a big moment for the brewery's history was in 1939 they received a royal decree that they were a business of good standing from the royal family. Now again today we wouldn't care about that or, or we would say well we're just about the beer. Um, the thing is you have to think about the time and the place. That was kind of a big deal. Um, again there was a time in the world where royal families and what they liked and everything meant a lot in society. So that was a big moment uh, for them. Uh, currently Boonrod besides uh, Sing Ha produce another beer called Leo which is similar they have another uh, they have a lion on the uh, label of that beer it's a similar style kind of European adjunct lager uh, which makes sense Southeast Asia because of the climate of water you're not going to drink bigger heavier beers down there generally uh, and besides Leo they also produce uh, soft drinks bottled waters and they brew Asahi for the Thai market down there so well that being said let's check out the stats
All right, so I thought today we would talk a little bit about the Asian craft beer market. Um, when you think Asian beer, a lot of people think beers like Singha, Beer Lao, Karen Ichiban, Asahi, Sing Tao. These, again, uh, kind of classic European-style lagers that are produced over there. And I get it to a certain extent. Uh, a, that's for a long time, if you went overseas, that's all you would find over there. Uh, and, and B, again, because of the climate over there, they're probably not going to do wee heavies and barley wines. Um, uh, also, too, probably access to certain style of hops are probably not going to try a lot, of, you know, try to recreate a lot of West Coast IPAs or whatever. And these beer brands have been successful, but that's changing over there, and they're, they're starting to really develop a, a true craft beer market and a true craft beer cra uh, craving. Uh, projected this year, of course, it's been kind of a crazy year, but they projected the uh, craft beer market in Asia would be worth $16 billion. Uh, but by 2025, they project that to hit around $45.5 billion, which means about roughly 23% annual growth rate, which is pretty outstanding, especially considering where the state of beer is, you know, here in the U.S. and other places where beer consumption is just not what it uh, used to be. Um, as far as big players inside the region, countries that import to other export to other countries inside the region, China's uh, by far number one, but number two is Thailand. Actually, f actually, well down that list is Australia, which is kind of surprising considering, you know, they do have a, a, a lengthy tradition of beer and brewing and, you know, some really stable brands. And they also still also do produce that classic European style lager, which still is a big part of that market. Um, the the main crowd pushing their growth over there is the 21 to 35 crowd, what we kind of consider millennials here. Um, probably more so over there than here. Everybody thinks our craft beer market's driven by millennial, but there's a lot of 40 something white guys that, that are in the craft beer thing too. Uh, where over there it is more predominantly the, the younger crowds. Uh, the product line that's really driving growth over there is actually low alcohol beers, which kind of makes sense. Um, you know, the millennial crowd here, and I'm sure it's similar over there, have discovered this thing called day drinking. And uh, when day drinking, though, again, you're not going to jump into those heavier, I, heavier beers, higher ABV beers. You'll want, you know, something a little lower in alcohol so you can finish your day at work or, you know, go home afterwards to be somewhere productive so it's the lower ABV beers are really driving growth over there uh, as far as the market it's still fairly segmented there's still a lot of regional breweries there's also still a lot of regulation um, that they have not opened themselves up like some of the states here in the US and certain other jurisdictions have to the craft beer movement uh, also to the the big players your Anheuser-Busch InBev your Car, or Carlsberg, your Heineken's, uh, they are coming into that market and you'll probably see some consolidation and some mergers and acquisitions happening uh, soon. So enough about the Asian beer market, let's try an Asian beer. All right, typical golden longer, about a finger plus head. Seems like plenty of carbonation. On the nose, that is a very stereotypical, slightly skunky European lager. So let's give her a try. All right, I got a little skunk on the nose, but not in the flavor. Um, nice, slightly sweet. I got, got the slight sweet punch in my uh, tongue. Just nice, classic lager. Easy drinking. I can imagine knocking these back on the beach there in Thailand. Um, not much hop to it, but it is a balanced beer. Um, yeah, nice sipper. Uh, pretty straightforward. Goes with the, you know, kind of Sorry about the bird. Uh, goes with the style. Uh, you know, fits in again with your Asahi, Sing Tao's, whatever. Overall, solid beer. 
Um, but nothing, uh, nothing over the top or great. Um, works. I'm shooting this in August in uh, Las Vegas, so it works perfect for this time of year. Um, like I said, pretty straightforward beer. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets you to we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Until next time, bottoms up.